I remember like a few years ago, it was like, like it, there was stories about you, like crazy stuff. And I remember getting the impression like, man, it seems like TJ Miller is in trouble with alcohol or something like that. And uh, I was I, like, I remember feeling like concerned for you. And then that concern just kind of like went away because there hasn't been any stories like well, that. Well, and what's interesting, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about this probably in March, but I have a brain condition. And I just oh, that's right. You reason, had you had brain surgery. I had brain surgery, and they took out a golf ball sized piece of my brain, mm. and it was from my right frontal lobe. And I was born with an AVM, which is an arterial venous malformation, and it's just a malformed part of your brain that never really develops. So it's just a mess of arteries and veins that you don't use, but it is um, it's prone to hemorrhaging. It's like more fragile than the rest of your brain. But what's weird, and again, I just didn't talk about this for a long time because I didn't want to make it a part of my identity, I guess was the reason I didn't, or I didn't want to be honest with myself that I was brain damaged, or as my neuropsychologist says, uh, had a traumatic brain injury. Oof. Um, Do you know what the injury was? So it wasn't, you're born with it. Okay. So yeah, birth was the injury, (laughs) the worst of all, because you never recover from it. Right. Um, And so... um, and so I, what happens with the brain is, because I don't have the same amount of brain matter as the two of you, the rest, this is the elasticity of the brain, it's such an amazing organ, um, all the other parts of my brain picked up the slack, and so I seem, act, and think as if I'm a regular person. Like right now you got, but what's different is I'm prone to mania. And so um, what somebody who is bipolar feels, I don't feel the depression side of that, but I can tip my way into the mania. Do you get manic at all? Yeah, sometimes, and when I do, it's fucking creepy as hell, dude. It's crazy, and so Do you know when it's happening? um, It's hard to tell until you're in it, and then when you're in it, it's you're so far gone that you're just like, this is amazing, my mind has reached a different, this is the greatest idea I've ever had in my life. 100%. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna work on the computer while I'm doing this thing, I'm gonna be able, no, I gotta write, I gotta write. So then you write like 50 pages, 100 pages, and then you stop, you're like, okay, I'll get back to this. But I gotta be making food while I'm doing it. It's just, it's so, I have never done cocaine, but I, people say it's like that, but it's not. Because because you're not on drugs, there's no way for you to be like, maybe it's the drugs. There's I, none of that. I had a, like a, a surgery recently. The one where I said I was the highest I've been. Like that yeah, tr- yeah, I just saw that video. That, yeah. that triggered some crazy mania in me. Like, but uh, you weren't, I didn't see, I've seen it other sides before and I, I, you were fucked up, but it wasn't like, I think it was just no sleep fucked up. Like I didn't see anything well, red and flag so, about it. So that's the big thing. And this is what you heard and, and said, what? There was like DJ something where you were on a train or something. That- so I had a manic episode on the train. And what happens is because of my condition, I have to get eight or nine hours of sleep a night. Oh, wow. So if I don't sleep for an entire night, it's very dangerous. And the other thing that's dangerous is combination. So five hours of sleep, having a bunch of drinks, being dehydrated, right? Smoking pot that's too strong, keeps me up. I only get three hours of sleep. Then all those things can kind of, I start to get my feet in mania. And what I've talked to my neuropsychologist about recently, like in the last week or two, is that I have to just be honest with myself that mania is fun. It can be fun. And so it's sort of addictive in that way where you're like, maybe I'll have another shot and so just stay up a little bit longer and see if I could just uh-huh. just get there. And then it's like, and then it goes, 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 goes. Mania is your drug of choice. Kind of, yes. And the way to get there is lack of sleep. Um, also, if you have extreme um, emotional swings, things that are happening like that, that can also trigger it. And that's what happened on the train, is that I had been going, I had been totally sleepless. I had this whole situation where this, uh, you know, it just, I, I had the internet absolutely attacking me. And I had it feeling like the world, so I was gonna spin out no matter what. And the problem is the way that I spin out, you used to be like this, I'm sure also, was to kind of turn to drugs and alcohol to kind of mollify that, like, ah. And that, instead of like making me be like, oh, yeah. gasoline crazy. on the fire. And, and so then what happened was I had a manic episode on the train where <coughs> I sort of believed that this woman was dangerous 
and which translates to other like well women can be dangerous and women that you don't know can do awful things and all this kind of so that was all in my brain da, da, da. and um and then i thought new yorker i'm very proud of living in new york city i was like well if you see something say something so i want to be a good new yorker and so i saw something i said something and i want to let you guys know if it's not anything it'll be something okay <laughs> oh it'll be say for a while it'll be everything uh but that in my mind it was all real it's all real that i'm yeah. helping that this woman deserves that we call this out and make sure that she's not being dangerous and all this stuff and so it was a misunderstanding with the federal government they eventually dismissed it because they understood for sure they're like okay if this is where he can get to, I had evaluations by all these doctors. But what it did that was great is I found this neuropsychologist who explained to me, you had this surgery in 2010 and they didn't have the thing that you needed. It didn't exist then. What I needed was called um, cognitive remediation. And it's where you go back and you teach yourself to do the things that other people do cognitively um, without thinking about it. Downregulate? I don't know. What is that? It's just like talking yourself down in a healthy manner. I know we haven't used that like like I don't I don't garbage. have like if I get frustrated I'm just like Ugh, and I had like normal people are just like okay cool it's not that big of a deal but it, I'm, I don't have that. There would be that. It's also things like looking at your schedule for the next day, or like um, what are some other examples of it? Just like like looking at me. This is all real looking in the mirror and seeing do I have physical signs of being tired because I never feel tired. Oh I my god, I, I feel never, tired. I can most sleep. Most of the time. He's like I'm, I'm always fucking tired. tired. Right it's the worst. It's and the so fucking worst. I don't have that. And so never will I be like and so that's why I'm kind of this indefatigable just never exhausted work ethic that I just constantly and it's driven also by wanting to make people feel good, wanting to make them laugh, because I think life is so fucking tragic, you know, from almost yeah, every angle. Yeah, sure. And so, and the, another reason I like circus, because no matter what you're yeah. doing, you tune into something steve is doing right now, and you're like, everything's gone, you're just like, is he going to die, type of thing. Yeah. And and also, you know, when you're a great storyteller, a person just lets everything go yeah. and sits in the story. If you've got a joke that's gonna make, so I love doing that so much, and so I just thought, well, I should just work as hard as I can until I die. And I had to sort of learn not to do that. So that's, that, that's been really helpful for me because now I, I recognize it. I can tell. And yeah, I mean, it's been age, can also tell. Like, like it's been a long time since like the, any of that has been in the consciousness, oh, yeah. right? Like, uh, yeah, I think so. And I think the other thing is, is that um, it's a shame that I didn't have a forum then to talk about mental illness. And it's also, it's not just mental illness, it's like, brain damage, you know, and what that can right. leave you with yeah. when you're trying to figure it out. Um, isn't that funny? Are you brain damaged at all? Uh, not that I'm aware of. See, I would like, I like think that it'd be the whippets? you would think it would be the absolute opposite that he would be brain damaged and I wouldn't. You well, know what I mean? right. Well, now, now, like with the CTE thing, they can't find out if you have it until you're dead and they like can look at your brain. So right. I mean, I'm a little bit of a question mark in that regard. Yeah, well, and the nitrous oxide was completely because it was a slowdown. I would never do cocaine or amphetamines or anything like that because I don't need to go that direction. I don't drink coffee, I don't do any of that mm. stuff. Um, but nitrous was so effective at bringing it down. Uh -huh. So I, I was probably in a manic state when I hosted the Critics' Choice Awards, the second one. And so to sort of bring that mania down, I would do nitrous because then it would be gone. Because drinking, that is depressing, it works, but you can't become undrunk like right, right, 15 right. minutes later. Did you ever start hearing voices when you were doing nitrous? A little bit. There, like the psychosis. Get yeah, because there, it can get pretty bad. The, when I stopped was when, because you do build a tolerance for it. Yeah. And I stopped when I was like, this just isn't, it's not bringing me down enough. Right. But it still like gives you it's a crazy. headache. So it's crazy. Because you did it for a long time. I, right? I did a lot of it, man. And, I did and a lot it, of it. it. It really messed me up, I think. What, uh, there is a, like a study done by the voices in your head. Uh, per, like based on the continent you're from, like the psychosis. Some some countries are like a woman's voice. Some countries are a men's voice. Some I, I, that's I had different. Weird. I, like I had I had a whole committee. 
Did you really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, I think, maybe did more of it. I'm surprised you don't have nerve damage. That was another right. problem from uh-huh. it. But um, I, yeah, I would hear sort of echo and then realize it's not my voice. Dude, so that's pretty fucking scary. Dude, I had voice. one of my voices was, was Tommy somebody, Lee. It was, there was someone who's in transition, I think. I don't really... Yeah. I don't define genders I, I, right now. This is 2022. Right. Okay. They identified as they, them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was a they, them voice. I, I, one of my voices was Tommy Lee. Like, really? Like, very, very distinctly. Like, 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 yeah, dude. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, that's it was the most, another whippy. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, was, yeah, it was the most distinct Tommy Lee. And uh, I, 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 I remember wanting to reach out to him. Like, dude, this is really you. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? And he was like, it was. It was. <laughs> yeah, he's at a computer station. He's yeah, like, just like, hiding behind your fence. <laughs> like, well, he's doing whippets again. <laughs> All right, dude. Yeah, anybody else that you, like, identify? Ah. Uh, was it female I, I, voices I, I, I or male voices? I don't remember any, like, celebrities. There's certainly, like, pe- personal friends, all kinds of them. Yeah, like. Um, it, it was wild, and the thing was that I loved it, dude. I yeah, it's a great drug. It. I tell yeah. people that all the time. It is a great yeah. drug, but your upside of the high just immediately goes away after a year or something like that, or two years. How long did you do it? Uh, off and on for a long time. Yeah, I'd go through phases of it. But, but, dude, everything you were just telling us was, was fucking fascinating, man. You yeah, know? It's, like, very, it's very bizarre. You know? and, yeah, and, and, and almost like as I like asked that, as you were telling all that story, I almost felt like, man, I've you know, put TJ in an, like, like a, an uncomfortable spot. But I also was so fascinated by it. You know? No, and I'm going to talk about it in my next special. I have a, a story about it from This Is Not Happening at Comedy Central at a show. It's called TJ uh, Miller Has a Seizure. But, you know, now I'm on medication and have been since 2010, and that's permanent. And so, and what I found out was that I used to be on Keppra, and now I'm on this, uh, this medication, Vimpat, which is sort of the next generation. But after Keppra, after I changed the medication, we were talking to my neurologist, and Kate said, so were there any, like, side effects that, we, that he had from Keppra that, that he, in the... My doctor was like, oh, yeah. And I go, what? And she goes, what do you mean? He goes, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, mood, he goes, mood instability, impulse control problems. That's a big one. And he named all these things, and Kate was like, uh, that's been the problem with everything. And, you know, his attitude was like, yeah, but if he didn't take it, he would die. So uh, why would I tell you, oh, we're gonna watch out for these side effects? Because that's him. Other, he's either dead or he's this guy. And so that was the thing, too, is nobody knew that. No employer would ever have been like, well, he has impulse control problems, so if he's going to, like, you know, decide to eat everything in the craft service table as a joke, then get sick, then that's kind of what he's going to do, I guess. we got to just watch out for that. So I never had any of that. So there's another thing that's weird, which is, like, I think people had this concept of me being kind of a crazy guy, but what they didn't understand was fi- that was – it was uh, – a physical thing. It was I was sort of because when I when I first found out about the AVM, I was filming Yogi Bear 3D. It's a children's movie. Mm. Do, you let him know? Do you yeah. let him know? It's again? in 3D as well. When the first time you found out about the adult video, <laughs> isn't it the AVN Awards? Yeah, yeah exactly. It won, it almost <laughs> won a, about. It almost won a BVN award, which was uh, Bear Bear News videos, and uh, and so. Um, <laughs> And so I was out there, and I'm ta- I'm playing Ranger Jones. So I'm a human. The bears are CGI. And I'm out there in New Zealand. Oh, so, so it's a live action it was, movie. Yeah, it's a live action and cartoon hybrid. You know, it's kind of like Roger Rabbit. Yeah. And so I'm there, and we're I'm I'm depressed. Me and uh, me and one of the other stars drinking all the time, all the time. And it's on the other side of the world, so my schedule is so I just stopped sleeping. And I started to go crazy. I didn't know it, but I was became obsessed with entanglement puzzles, and which are like you know the horseshoe, the two horseshoes with the yeah. ring, and you got to try and so that. And then I started to kind of think my mind had elevated, and I was somehow smarter than everybody else. Not like I'm smarter. Than, I just had gotten to a different plane. And then I would I would hear voices. I had a tough time going to sleep. Um, so I had to listen to Morgan Murphy, who's this comedian, and she would talk, and I was sort of sorry. 
And I really started believing, I narrated my own conversation. So I, if I was at that point, I would come in and I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna start with a compliment to you, but I'm gonna make <laughs> my way to talk about how his hoodie no. seems like a mistake, but kind of helps balance out the two of us. And then I'm gonna connect our experiences as clowns. And then we're gonna sort of do a clown bit type thing. And I'll, I'll bring that all back to the compliment that you got. So go ahead, Thank guys. you. Yeah, and so I, I would do that. And then I brought these two girls from uh, Liverpool, England. I met them on chat roulette. And I flew them to New Zealand, and they stayed with me uh, for the rest of the movie. And it wasn't like a um, sexual thing. I just brought them to bring a new, fresh perspective to the movie set so that everybody could see the movie through the eyes of people that weren't sort of bogged down by it. Because it took forever. It was a really hard movie to shoot, everything. So I was doing all this stuff, and then I came back, and I did so much fucking nitrous. Because at that point, I had a brain hemorrhage, a very small bleed. So there's overactivity specifically in this part of my head, which is the one that works on language and all that kind of stuff. And I was going so fast, I couldn't sleep. So I was just doing nitrous all the time, all the time, morning to night, constantly, spending thousands of dollars on nitrous high. Because it costs about a dollar for a cartridge. So it's like the most expensive high you could ever imagine How long does a life. cartridge last you? Like what, 30 hits? seconds? I mean, no, it's one hit. You just do one cartridge completely. And you were doing like the... Um uh, yeah, yeah. The, the whipped cream dispenser, the dispenser. I got right? really good at like having two of the dispensers. So I'd, like I'd be like filling them up, like going back. I got to a point where I could just about not breathe in anything except nitrous oxide. Oh, because you, yeah, if you hold your breath, you get just more to high. the exclusion of oxygen. Yeah, but I would. I would <laughs> that's insane. That I wasn't doing. Was your goal to what's called fish out, where you lose consciousness and you're like flopping around like a fish? No, I think that's a major difference between you and me. That's what, that's all I wanted. And I would be holding my breath and holding, sucking in more and like you writhing around the floor. Like I'd be mad at myself, like if I couldn't hold my breath until I lost consciousness and flopped around you like a fish. You would know you're doing this? No, but I would find out when I woke up and I'd be like, yes. <laughs> really? Dude, you are so fucking hardcore. No, but I would do the two dispensers at once and do both of them at once or one after the other. But I'd read somewhere that the oxygen nitrous cut if, that the dentist's office gives you is 70-30 nitrous it, to yeah. air. And so I would try and kind of gauge that. I'd sort of do, uh, and then yeah. regular air, and then, <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's like a dollar a cartridge. So for an afternoon, you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's a bad drug to have unlimited money. Yeah. And you'd be able to buy as much as you want. Yeah. Um, Where do you buy this shit at? At the smoke, smoke shop. shops. And then they become dealers, and you kind of go in there, and they give you a better price for the 100 packs. And I, I would get a case of the 24 boxes. 25 per case, so it's, I think that comes to 600. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, and I, had, I found a place I could buy them online, and Kate got so mad at me once because she came... And she like was like, these two boxes came from they're so heavy and I, it took me forever to get them up. And she's like, what are in those? And I had forgotten. And Here. I was like, I don't know, open ah, them did, up. You didn't forget. And she that, saw it, she goes, this is all nitrous oxide. And I was like, oh yeah, it's for us. <laughs> I thought we would enjoy it. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? Happy anniversary. Right, exactly. No, I mean, you know, it's. I would also do shit on nitrous. If you're like in it, you start to kind of fog. That's what happened to me. Instead yeah. of fishing out, I would fog out. So right, right, right. Everything writing, gets like foggy, right. And, and, and you write regrettable emails? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Often to myself, which is like, go cancel this order that you sent to your wife's studio. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was. So I got back from Yogi Bear 3D, was just crushing cartridges nonstop. And then I had this seizure, and then another seizure. And when I got there, they did a, a scan, and they were like, you have an AVM, which is something we usually find in autopsy. So most people, they only find it after they're dead. And, um, and so I was really, really lucky, and it was Cedar sinai which is the great hospital. Yeah. And they performed surgery, they embolized it, and then you know removed it. And I, I remember they were like- This is in 2010? Yes. So that's, that's the brain surgery. That was the brain surgery. It was like So do you have a killer 15. scar or is it under your hair? Yeah, it's under my hair, but it's, yeah, I have, if you, I 
can't do really. without a mirror. But it's yeah, there's yeah. a scar that goes from here all the way down. And I need to do a movie where I shave my head and look like an insane person because that would be a good. It's a good look for a villain. Um, but I. I went in and they said, look, this, we do this surgery, but one out of 10 people that do it die. And that's just kind of statistics. We just have to tell you that it's a 10% fatality rate. But if you didn't get the surgery. So I asked, I said, well, will I still be funny after the surgery? And the doctor was like, what? <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, that's kind of my livelihood. And it's also, it's what I do. It's what makes life worth living for me is making other people laugh. So will I still be funny? And he's like, I mean, I think so, because you're not really using that part of your brain. So yeah, I guess. And I go, okay. And I go, what happens if I don't get the surgery? He's like, well, you probably die when you're in your mid-30s, like 35. And I was like, I'm a gambling man, let's roll the dice, you know? And now I'm here, and you guys have better hot sauce for it, you know? Yeah, dude, big so time. So made it, made it through that, and then took the Capra, which is that one that <laughs> made me crazy, uh, mildly crazy and then I got off of it because they told me it was elective so I just stopped taking it for like 11 days man that's this doctor that didn't tell you about the side effects and said you would die if you didn't take it now you learn it's elective well so here's what it was he he that this was before he said you'll so he goes it's elective his name is Dr. Sokol he's the best neurologist maybe in the world he's world renowned and he said, it's elective, you don't have to take it, but you should. And so then I decided five years later, I'm gonna stop taking it. And I had a seizure in like two weeks, you know? So then he said to me, when he saw me again, he goes, okay, now you're, there's a percentage of people that they have to take Keppra, and it's a smaller percentage. So you're in the small percentage that didn't die. You're in the smaller percentage that has to take Keppra or you will die. Whoa. And so that's kind of where you are. So I actually, in that world, I'm like, like a case study because I also become incredibly successful while still having this AVM condition. And I'm probably, I'm, I am, I'm the most high, high profile person with this type of brain damage. Um, but it's, it's been so good now. I mean, the train thing was so awful for so many reasons, but I was so, and that, that was like five years ago. Yeah. It was a while ago. Yeah. And it's, but I was so lucky to find this cognitive remediation, this, you know, this psychologist, this neuropsychologist who said, we've really got to help you learn how to do the things that other people do without thinking. Yeah. And so as she's helped me mm -hmm. do that, it's gotten a lot better. And I worked for so long. I'm going to ask you about this. I worked for so long with the brain damage, using alcohol to bring, using nitrous oxide to bring the mania down, also using it to trigger mania so that I could get more and more work done, that I had to learn how to work without feeling like I need to do this, this, that, I gotta stay up, I can't go to sleep, I gotta, da. did you feel like you had to do that when you sort of got completely sober? I had to just put work aside and just make make sobriety the only priority for me. And I did that for, for really like the first two years. I think that clip was awesome, but not as awesome as my new book, A Hard Kick in the Nuts, What I've Learned from a Lifetime of Terrible Decisions. My first book's five star rated on Amazon. And I have no doubt this one will be too. So get the autographed copy right now at stevo.com. Yeah, dude.